So, it's Saturday night, it's the Romford Film Festival, and we have just had uh, some great films. And uh, with me, I have Greg from West Bottoms, and I have Orly from The Tears of Bear Schmidt, and we have Bear. So, I'm going to start um, with you, Greg. So, did I write? Did, am I right in catching that this was your very first screening of your film? Yes, yes. And how was it? How was it for seeing it on the screen here? Uh, it was great. It's it beat seeing it like that for three, four months. So yeah, that's great. That's great. And but um, Orly, you you've shown the film elsewhere already, haven't you? Can I congratulate you? I really enjoyed your film very much. I was really moved, uh, okay. that much that I couldn't pay attention to the film after which happened to be in Smolak. I was really uh, taken aback by it, so yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, the question was... You played uh, the film elsewhere, haven't you? Uh, yes, Quite yes. recently. Uh, yes, that is true. The film was played in, a, in, a, in Belgium, in a very sweet uh, festival in uh, Rennes. We won uh, um, uh, the generous awards in uh, Verité uh, uh, Award, so that was very uh, kind. Uh, yeah, and this is our second screening actually. Um, I'm not sure how the British crowd has taken uh, such an uh, observational film, but uh, I think, if I'm honest, it, uh, this, uh, I mean, I might be wrong, but I, growing up, I saw a lot of observational films very much like this. Obviously, there's yeah. a different twist. Yeah. Um, but while we're on that subject, is there um, a documentarian that inspired you to film in this style? Yeah, not necessarily. I do, of course, uh, am a fan of Frederick Weissmann and uh, Chantal Ackermann, and I think you can probably notice some of that. Um, Although the tone is uh, probably more Hanukkah, which is uh, uh, one of my uh, favorites, but I, w I wasn't really uh, uh, taking inspiration in that sense uh, for this film. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to focus on you for a little while, Greg. No pressure. Um, so, and I'm sure our audience are going to agree, uh, I got really anxious watching your film. I got really anxious because uh, just that first parting, it's like you can't leave it like that, you can't leave it like that. And I could feel myself getting really, and I, and I think I felt it more watching it the second time, which is really strange, than I did the first time. Seeing it on the big screen and feeling that, that you know, you've got to go, you can't just drive off. Um, how hard do you think it is to like pace something like that and get people to feel emotion? Because I'm not the only one. We spoke about this upstairs a little while ago. And Kevin said Kevin said he found it emotional. Carrie certainly said she found it emotional. How, how you tell us a bit more about how you build towards that? I well, I think it's it, dramatic short subject films are like really hard to do and. I think what my experience was this, we did a reshoot, and I think um, I still like sitting back there watching it now. It just to me, since I've watched it so many times, the emotion's kind of gone. It's just it seems so really fast because you just have to you have 20 minutes to tell all this stuff. Um, and so we did a lot of reshooting. Like um, for instance, he's his friend picks him up. He's in the truck. And originally we just cut right to the motel scene where he confronts his daughter. It's just, it needed that like breathing space. And some of those scenes don't necessarily turn and they're not dramatic, but they're just, they're needed, I think, in something like this to give you just that breathing room. Um, somebody today commented that the motorcycle scenes kind of do that. They kind of this like, um, and I think for me at least as a motorcyclist, um, I wanted to make a film where the motorcycle played a role. It wasn't just that he just rode a motorcycle like Batman. I was like, oh, that's cool. But like, it had a, a feel to it, and you could tell that he was connected with his machine. And so I think some of those, you know, he's on one last ride, 
sort of writing his demons out, and he wrote it till he ran out of gas, um, and he finds out bad news, um, and he rides a motorcycle, and you know, us motorcyclists, if anybody's out there, you know twisting a throttle is an emotional thing, and can be an emotional thing, you twist the throttle and scream to get some of that aggression out. So I think for this film, that helped too, to have those moments where he could ride. How long did the film take to shoot? With the reshoots, it was, I think, probably about five days ago. Because I don't know about anybody else, but I think when I was watching it, the attention to detail, uh, all the close-ups on different things, I thought to myself, this is probably something that took weeks and weeks. <coughs> no, I think, like, I, like I, I hear... I watch a lot of commentaries, and it seems like all these directors say, oh, I hate post, I hate pre-production, I just love production, and post-directors get over this pre-production mm -hmm. stuff. And, and I'm kind of the opposite. I, I love pre-production. I love like spending the time. You know, I think if you're an architect and you spend more time with your drawings, it's going to be a better building when it's being constructed. Um, and so I'm also a big fan of like all, all the minutia and like I'm a hands-on with like, pr production design and costuming and locations and um, I love uh, Akira Kurosawa says that you know pay attention to the details the audience may not know it but they'll feel it mm -hmm. and I love that and I love just like when there's like a chemistry between all of those things and so I think what helps to cost us money is just to spend more time up front and planning those things and location scouting and boarding and all those kind of things. Can you talk to us a little bit about the casting? Uh, so the film was shot in my hometown of Kansas City, which is right smack in the middle of the United States. Um, not a cinema mecca. So um, there's a lot of good actors in Kansas City. And we did some auditions. But I have such specific roles. It's harder when you're doing that and you want to look. I mean, the guy's down and out. and I could have some clean cut Midwestern American guy. And so the two leads are from California. So I, I reached out to channels there and cast out of LA, which is a gold mine for acting and found the right people. And obviously, as we touched upon, you and I outside, having a phenomenal cinematographer helps, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And such a polished look for the film. Like, this is. You know, this is straight out of Hollywood. You know, the way it's shot, the the you know the the way the the framing is done, um, and as I said earlier, the attention to detail. Um, it would, is this someone you've worked with before, or was this like your first? No, uh, my cinematographer is Isaac Alonji, and I, I, he actually is from Kansas City, and I, I think he's just amazing. And we worked together for probably over a decade, and we sort of had this uh, marriage, if you will, um, where we're two totally different people, and we can argue and whatever, but it seems like there's like a symbiotic um, where, I don't, I don't know, like, again, the pre-production thing, I love location scouting, it's like a treasure hunt to me and you just find the right when I found her house that she comes out of at the end uh, Jessica character had the little white picket fence and next to it and it was just like um, and so Isaac and I kind of worked that way where like I just love that and when he shows up he just has all these ideas and and can do the rest and we just worked that way for over a decade and uh, we make a great team out there. Uh, moving on to can I ask Greg a quick question? Yeah, go for it. Um, uh, it was quite interesting because uh, I was pretty sure that they are lovers in the beginning and then I caught myself thinking that's his daughter, it's not. And I, I really enjoyed that uh, confusion that was created, hmm. uh, with me at least. And I was wondering if it's something that you um, wanted to play with or... No, that, it might be in the... In, in the translation um, because when she's banging on the door at the very beginning she yeah. says dad she says that yeah, yeah so yeah. right away I wanted to establish yeah, wanted the relationship to, yeah. So. yeah yeah 
well, it was intimate this way or that way. And mm. I'm, I'm, I feel lucky I missed the word that in the beginning. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. what's it like being the subject of a documentary? Who think you it uh, in the hotel to say? Doting. Yeah, very, very scary. <laughs> yes. and, and Deadly scary to be. <laughs> <coughs> and how did how did this whole relationship start? How where did this all come from? In terms of uh, in terms of us meeting, yeah, um, and deciding to shoot this story. Yeah, well, Be Bea is uh, her pub is uh, is down the road of uh, of my house. Yes. Um, so uh, uh, it was bound to happen that we will cross uh, paths. Um, uh, I was attracted to the pub. It's a workers' pub. Um, uh, it's very classic in Amsterdam, it's the DNA of uh, Amsterdam, and it's not really a crowd that likes to be uh, filmed, uh, so I was attracted even more. <laughs> um, uh, and Bea was a good uh, in, she's very welcoming, uh, her pub consists of like uh, children, tourists, gamblers, uh, everything is, is a mix and she makes everyone feel uh, belong there, uh, and it's her house. Um, but in a way she doesn't, um, uh, yeah, there's a sense of, of a miss in belonging because of her past. And once I understood that, I, I figured, okay, we can do something here. So um, from Bea's perspective, how is it to be so open with an audience? Shall I ask her? Yes, yeah. please. Uh, who feels it so uh, open to say, yeah, for men, sir. Yeah, net hebben gezien. Hoe voel je erover? Best wel emotioneel. Best wel emotioneel. Oh, schat. Pretty emotional. Yeah. Yeah, because you you know you really get to see everything, don't you? Yeah. It was a good project. It was a good iets tussen ons. Dus daarom ben ik zo open. Ja. Denk. Ja, snap ik. Maar. Vertalen maar. Nee, ga maar. Ik denk dat het heel fijn is dat het café blijft. Dus dat is als het project eerst. Ja, zo Bea zegt, de trust between us was uh, uh, very important. And that's why it was possible to do something like that. And for her in the beginning, uh, there was a genuine fear that the pub will uh, close down. Uh, so she wanted to uh, uh, record possibly the last days of it um, uh, yeah, but then it's trust that made it uh, possible eventually <laughs> yeah and uh, yeah no it's, it's just it's just really heartwarming to see that level of exposure so mm. to speak i think it's hard to run on so <coughs> yeah yeah but i'm not well blind yeah, no, yeah. that's good. Very yeah, she's happy with it. Okay. Yeah. And that's good. Yeah. Isn't it? Isn't it? Because for the for the next peoples, for the ladies and the men, the uh, young young is not okay. Yeah. The people is video uh, PC and in this in this in this cafe is it gewoon uh, mobiel weg and spelletjes aan <laughs> Uh um, I, I guess it's Bear, Bear's way to say in my cafe, uh, there's no digital um, uh, presence, it's people coming together. Um, that's important for her. Yeah? Have we got any questions out here? Um, oh, I have one front, quickly. Oh, oh, where? Go ahead. I just had a very quick one. Um, how many hours, I know it's an obvious one, how many hours did you shoot and how on earth did you go about editing it down? Is it for Greg? Uh, no, for, for you, Ollie. Uh, um, uh, how many hours I shot, that's a very good question. I think there's definitely over uh, hundreds of hours, but I'm an editor uh, um, in my background. So for me, it's a, it's a, yeah, like a voyeur fetish. I'm a footage junkie. So uh, for me, it's a delight to sit and dig in and see what is the material and forget everything I know before I start editing. So, yeah, that's the fun part. Uh, and even though there's, of course, insecurity and inner dialogue, what, what am I, um, 
what am I going to do? I know that there's one way at the end that I, I, I can do it, that it's mine. Uh, and I have trust in that. I do it for other people as well. So, um, yeah, that's my comfort zone. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how it's experienced uh, um, uh, in the audience, though. So, yeah. Um. I was exactly like you. I missed the word dad. So all the way through that, I thought it was a girlfriend. So that's two of us who made that mistake. Um, a pleasant mistake, isn't it? Pardon? Isn't it a pleasant mistake? No, not really, because I spent the time like, if, if I'd known it was his daughter, yeah. I would have viewed that quite differently. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was a real shame that that was lost, that one little word. Right, I mean, if that's two responses. The first location, his squat was amazing. How did you find that? And were you allowed to film there? You know, the open air? Yeah, so uh, West Bottoms is actually a part of the city I live in, and it's the old warehouse district, and so we just found owners of old warehouses and just went to a bunch and looked, and they had, um, so that building was built in 1895, and the one next to it um, was equally as old, but it had burned down, so they had those doors that actually led to another building at one time, but it was gone. And so um, I kind of felt uh, like I really wanted this guy to feel like kind of a rat and he like lives subterranean. And, and so I love the idea that he kind of lives in this hole if you're coming into this little rat. And so when I saw that, I was like, I think this is it. But he was sitting there in the open air of the sunshine at the window, wasn't he? So Kind of that that kind of represented his need for freedom and anarchy. yeah um yeah i think it does as well i mean i love the visual that like there's freedom for him but it's kind of a door to nowhere because it's four stories up and straight down so. well i've got three questions for Bea. the first one is um it's an amazing pub you have all of life there you have the young football men you have the nine-year-old girl, you have the old man, the quiz, mm. the billiard All lessons, together. everybody is welcome. It, it took a long time for us yeah, to watch cool. and then we start to feel we are part of that yeah. pub, enjoying yeah. the atmosphere. Yeah. So I am very concerned now to know what is the future really and the current situation fun, fun, fun. with the pub. <coughs> I don't it's know. I don't know. So it's still in the balance. Mm. Can you get a petition from all the people? No. Can you petition? Okay. No. no. This is only money. It's money. Mm. Yeah, as the daughter of an alcoholic, how did you then as an adult come to be working and immersed in the world of alcohol? That's an excellent question. As a kind of a van een uh, alcoholist, hoe ben je uh, geëindigd om in een kroeg te gaan werken? Ik ben er ingeronden, een man had de kroeg. Ja. Mijn liefje. Ja, alles goed. Zo, ja. um, uh, so, so the husband she had, Andre, uh, that is mentioned in the film, he owned uh, the pub. And she fell in love with him, and when he died, she took over the pub, because that was Andre for her. Uh, that was what was left uh, from her um, uh, husband. So the pub is... Andre. Andre. <laughs> the, the, the boy from Andre. You didn't find it difficult to be involved in alcohol having find had seen the negative? Om, uh, rond alcohol te, te yeah. staan? Ja. Yeah. Daar waar ben ik ook begonnen voor een evenementencafé. Yeah. Dus groepen mensen. That, that's why she started uh, doing uh, events, so groups of people. So there's uh, the, the, the football or the, the quiz, and then she's surrounded with a lot of people, and it's more, um, yeah, sense of home, I guess. Daarom ben ik ook blij met deze film. Oh, wat schattig gaat. That's why she's happy with uh, the film as well. And the last question, we do have observational documentaries like that in England. And of course. And pe people course. who are the subjects of them say that after a while, you very quickly forget that the camera is there. Mm. I find that quite hard to believe that you have a camera and you forget, is that actually true and is that what happens, Bea? Ze zeggen, nou mensen maken dit soort films natuurlijk in Engeland. En ze zeggen allemaal, op een gegeven moment ben ik vergeten dat de camera er was. 
Hoe ben je het ook vergeten dat die ja, camera Vaak wel. Ja. Door de drukte, door de feesten. Ja. Ik ben gewoon mezelf toch? Ja, nee, zeker weten. Ja, ja. Uh, she, she, she forgot about me, in, in to be short. Ja. <laughs> ja. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, ja, yeah, I think it's part of the trust really. So uh, it, it takes a while. It wasn't uh, like that from day one, of course. And uh, I, I think after a while, when you trust someone, it's like not noticing your daughter walking around. You know, she's there. Uh, and she's not going to bite you. So uh, no, I, I think it happens. And I think it would be a lie to say that people are unaware of the camera. Of course they are. But after. A certain time. I think I spent a year, maybe two years, with uh, with Bea. Um, yeah, there's a sense of uh, we trust Orly. She's not gonna. She's gonna treat us in respect. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got a question here. Actually, one for um, for Orly and one for Greg. Um, the scene where the kite and the song is being played. Was that planned? Um, uh, no. <laughs> um, that was incredible. No, uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, André Hasses is uh, 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 one of the biggest uh, uh, singers in, of Holland. Um, everyone knows his songs. So, uh, um, a pub quiz. It was a pub quiz. It, it was definitely a pub quiz, Bea. Yeah. Uh, and it, the pub quiz was about uh, Andre Hassel's any song, so all the quotes, of course, are from his songs. Um, uh, he also uh, uh, lived across a cafe similar to the one of there in the same neighborhood, uh, the Pipe. Uh, I think most uh, tourists who come to Amsterdam end up uh, in the Pipe and end up in this kind of uh, uh, cafes. And, and those pubs are consisting of, yeah, alcoholics and, and people who are uh, uh, working class and they come to the pub to forget to forget for a second so um, uh, the flicher the kite song is something that people definitely sing together especially in communities where it's difficult to have uh, a sincere dialogue or a conversation about feelings you end up singing together and this is how you share your um, yeah common haunted childhood if you wish so Thank you. I thought it was so appropriate and, you know, the, the song about receiving a mother, a uh, letter from the mother as well. Um, really quite beautiful, moving. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, Craig, um, in relation to the cinematography, I thought it was beautiful. And the acting was spotless as well. Just incredible. Mm. Um, so my question was more around... Are you planning to develop into a feature? Or because there were you know, so many aspects of the short film that could be explored. So is this Yeah, actually I am writing a feature version of the story, expanding it. So Excellent. yeah. Right. Thank you. Hi, this is a question for Greg. Um, I love the film, I thought it was brilliant. Um, and then basically I just wanted to ask you. Um, for your characters, I mean, each everyone was, I think, pretty much put on for for their parts, and so my question would be, what was your casting process like? And um, yeah, that, <laughs> they were brilliant. Thank you. Um, I'll pass that along to them. Um, it, it's. I kind of said this earlier, like uh, it's really hard for me to describe my processes because I just sometimes feel it and I think the medium is best served that way when something just feels right, um, you go with your gut. Um, again, I had difficulty in Kansas City finding the leads, but um, I think one thing that I, I lean towards is, is like we're in a visual medium and everything that you do should be interesting to look at and so and and not only that but obviously fitting to the story um and like Catherine who plays jessica um when i saw her tape like i saw her pop up on the screen i was like i just felt it and i mean she's a beautiful woman she's a model but she's not like a traditional beauty and she has these like really interesting things about her look and I just, I wanted that for all of these characters. Um, 
when I cast Corey as cool, he, you know, he's got those eyes and he, he just looks rough and he looks like he's had a rough life. And, um, and he actually, he doesn't have any tattoos himself, but he came, he actually got like uh, um, the same type of tattoos we use to put on him. Um, not permanent tattoos, I don't know what we call them, but, and he did his tape that way. And I, I was just like, oh my God, this guy's like perfect. And mm -hmm. he's already got tattoos, we don't have to get tattoos and they washed off. But, um, so that's kind of the process I think is just finding like people with the chops, but also that are interesting and, and just feel right. So, um, I need to wind this up, but uh, I just wanted to say, uh, starting from this end, Bayer, I know we can all feel that this is still really raw for you. And thank you for sharing your story with us. Thank you for all the achievements on stage. Orly, thank you for capturing it so beautifully. Thank you very much. And uh, for sending the film to us. Thank you. Greg, what a piece of work. It's truly beautiful. Really pulled at my heartstrings. Thank you so much. Everyone, please give them a final round of applause. Thank you.